I'm really delighted to welcome you here this evening to this inaugural meeting with you, which is our first of a series of public health lectures that are going to be held over the next week to try and promote awareness of lung disease. And the Irish Lung Health Alliance is a charity, a charitable group of um, uh, people that have come together to try and promote lung health, and we're hoping to do that this evening with a group of very uh, interesting speakers that will have a very different perspective about lung health. We're going to try and steer away a little bit of, from lung disease, which tend, we tend to talk about a lot, and promote really lung health, and that's really what this will be about. But of course, I want to set the scene a little bit and just explain to you really why we're all here. So, lung disease is extremely common in Ireland, and I think if you went walk out into the general public and ask them what are the major diseases that affect people, they'll talk about heart disease, they'll talk about coronary artery disease, diabetes, and obesity. But actually, very few people realize that respiratory disease is, is an extremely uh, important public health uh, uh, issue, and in fact, it causes more deaths in Ireland now than heart attacks. Um, it causes one in five deaths in Ireland, so one in five people in Ireland will die of lung disease. It is the single most common reason for people to go and see their GPs, the third most common reason for admission to acute hospitals, and also when they, people with respiratory disease get admitted to acute hospitals, they actually end up in hospital for quite a long period of time. So in fact, if you look, if you go to a hospital at any particular time, you'll find that often a third to a half of patients in the hospital are there because of lung problems. The European Respiratory Society published a white book about uh, a month ago which was looking at the statistics across Europe uh, with regards to lung health. Um, sadly, Ireland fared very, very poorly in this report. And in fact, we have a mortality that is the third worst in Europe, but also the, the worst of Western Europe for people with lung disease. In addition, last year on World Spirometry Day, the, the Irish Thoracic Society did a study where we did free lung function testing throughout the country. And people who had no history of lung disease were able to come and get their breathing test checked. And what we found was that one in five people had abnormal lung function. And of those, one in seven of them actually had evidence of airflow obstruction, which would mean the, the, a diagnosis of asthma or COPD. And these were people that had no idea that they had lung problems at all. So it, it again reflects the importance of lung disease and the fact that there's a lot of lung uh, disease out there. So why is lung disease so severe in Ireland? Why is it so common in Ireland? Well, I suppose one of the main reasons we're here today is to try and promote awareness of lung disease. As I said before, people don't really uh, think about lung problems. If they get breathless, they think of other things that may be contributing to it, but don't think they necessarily have a lung problem. There also is, I think, a lack of interest in lung disease in general amongst policymakers because it's often considered to be, ah, that's all smoking related. Only people who smoke get lung disease, and sure, it's a lifestyle choice, or if we sort out smoking, we'll sort out lung disease. Well, you'll see from the charities here today that actually the vast majority of conditions that we as lung doctors look after are not related to smoking. They're actually related to people who've never touched a cigarette in their lives. And also, I think what's a very important feature over the last few decades has been there's been a lack of a cohesive message about lung disease. Um, from the, 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 basically because there's been a large group of patient advocacy groups for individual diseases with, with, uh, that affect the lungs, and there's never really been a cohesive approach to try and have a central message. And that brings me to the Irish Lung Health Alliance, because the Irish Lung Health Alliance formed about two years ago, and really what it was, was it brought together all of these charities that you can see on the slide that represent different individual uh, patients who have lung problems. And this includes genetic conditions like alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, cystic fibrosis, asthma is well represented there, Irish Cancer Society, sarcoidosis, lung fibrosis, the list uh, sleep apnea, lung, lung hypertension. So there's a long list of patients uh, um, who are represented by the uh, Irish Lung Health Alliance. And it's through the coming together of these groups that we've come up with a strategy to try and promote lung health, really just through some four simple messages. We, people need to know that lung disease can affect anybody, no matter what age they are, no matter what social background that they have, and no matter whether they smoke or not. That's one important point. The second thing is that lung disease is very treatable, but the earlier you treat it, the better. And unfortunately, if you leave lung disease and let it continue over time, it can destroy the lungs to the point where it can actually be irreversible and we can't re return to normal lung function. So the earlier you treat lung disease, the better. 
The third point, and I think this is probably the most important of them all, <coughs> is that symptoms of breathlessness, um, if people have breathlessness and have noticed that over time they're getting a little bit more breathless with exercise, don't just attribute it to age or gaining weight or maybe not going to the gym or being as active as you were before. You know, this may indicate that you have lung disease, and if it persists, or else if you have symptoms such as cough or wheeze with these symptoms, then get it checked out by your GP, and a simple breathing test may be all that you need to do to show, uh, to determine whether you have lung disease or not. And then finally, and, and, and now I get on to something a little bit more positive, is let's keep lungs healthy. Let's look after our lungs, avoid pollutants, avoid exposures that can damage the lungs, and stay active. I'm obviously going to hear about that, so uh, how to do that over the course of the next hour and a half or so. So I'm just going to throw out a few little facts that people may uh, not know about the lungs. They're actually, they will, these will be covered by a lot of our additional speakers. Um, one thing I suppose people don't realize is that right now your lungs are actually working extremely hard to clear your, to clear your chest. You know, if we go down into the lungs and we have a look inside them, what we see is that the lungs are lined by these little, tiny little hairs, and there are millions and millions of these little hairs. And what their job is to try and clear the lungs out. So when we take a breath in here in this environment, it's a nice old beautiful room, a bit dusty, the dust will land in our, in our lungs, and it gets cleared out to a very innovative and obviously a very um, uh, uh, important mechanism of lung clearance, and these are these fine little hairs. And just to show you exactly what I mean by that, this is one cell with those hairs beating in rhythm. And this is happening now millions of times in millions of cells throughout your lungs right now. As you're sitting here, these hairs are all beating in unison. They're moving the mucus and they're moving little bits of dust up to the back of the throat. Sometimes you may cough, it, sometimes you may swallow it. And that's how our lungs clean themselves. The other thing I think is worth noticing, and I think we have some so uh, extraordinary athletes who will be giving talks both today and, and in, in the other centres around the country is that we're all relaxed here breathing. We're breathing in about seven to eight litres of air per minute, and that, that's about normal. Of course, if you uh, decide to go, you hop up on your bike and cycle up to uh, up, up a hill, uh, that can actually quite increase. And, and the average person, when they can do a little bit of exercise, can get up to 60 litres per minute. So it's a big, you can really dig deep into the reserve of your lung and, and, and use it to try and get air in and out of the body to make yourself fit. And you know, this is quite a substantial amount of air to get in and out of your lungs. But of course, if you, if you look at, if you go to a, a rugby pitch and you watch someone like Paul O'Connell playing rugby, this is the kind of level of air that, these, that his lungs will be getting in and out. Up to 200 litres per minute uh, in high performance athletes, usually tall, you know, rowing, in, um, uh, long distance running, cycling, really heavy in, in endurance sports. This is the volume of air that people are getting in and out of their lungs during the course of that exercise. But it is only in elite athletes. There is a, a, a often discussion about whether um, elite athletes have huge lungs or whether you, you, they become elite athletes because of huge lungs. And I think it's a bit of a chicken or egg story. But you can see here that these elite athletes really can increase their lung volumes. And then finally, just a few other minor facts. I mean, people don't consider that the lungs are in fact the organ other than the skin most exposed to the environment. When we take a breath in, we fill our lungs full of air directly from the environment. There's no other organ in the body that's, that's so exposed to the environment. And, that's, and that obviously means that the lung is very open to damage from the environment and obviously we can pick up infections. It's also the only other organ that has 100% of the output of the heart goes through the lungs. So when the right heart pumps, it pumps all the blood through to the left side of the heart, which then gets pumped around the rest of the body. 14% goes to the kidneys, 20% goes to the brain. They really don't need all that blood, where the lungs do, because the lungs are able to supply that blood with oxygen. And then finally, the lung just is an organ that can float in the water. And that doesn't really come, it's not that surprising, it's full of air. But that is where the name lung comes from, actually. It's an old English word, lungan, which is uh, the English word for light organ. So, just a little bit of trivia there about, uh, about the lungs. So, it's now my great pleasure to uh, introduce our program for, the, for today. We really have a, a wonderful selection of speakers here. We have Professor Sean Gain, who is a respiratory physician like myself and also is a medical physician for the Olympic team. We have Dr. Ronnie Delaney, who needs no introduction, an outstanding athlete who's, who's run for his country and is a gold medalist in the Olympics. We have Dr. Basil Elvis here, who will give a, a, a child's, uh, not a child, sorry, a children's perspective on, on lung health, and uh, will chat to us a, a bit about pediatric lung health. And then at the end, we will have uh, a physiotherapist who works a lot with people who have lung disease, who will talk to us about 
keeping fit, using activity to promote lung health, as well as Mr. Stuart Mark is going to give us a patient's perspective. So I'll sit down now and I'll introduce our first speaker, Professor Sean Gaines.